in the U.S. because Donald Trump appears in a court in Miami a little later today, the first former U.S. president to face a federal criminal prosecution. He's accused of hoarding thousands of classified government documents after leaving office and lying to officials who try to get them back. Mr. Trump denies the charges against him and says they are politically motivated. Let me just show you the live pictures from uh, around the court buildings because uh, you can see, of course, all the television trucks and security, but uh, already some of Donald Trump's supporters gathering there and uh, relatively high levels of security given some of the things that have been posted uh, in the last few days on social media. But uh, uh, the scene very much set for the hours ahead. And watching proceedings is our correspondent, Gary O'Donoghue. So let's bring him in. Uh, and Gary, in terms of uh, legal jeopardy, just how grave is the situation for Donald Trump? These are serious charges, there's no question. 31 of them, of 37 he's facing, are under what's called the Espionage Act. And that sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? And it is. And this is about withholding documents of national security. Interestingly or not, it doesn't really matter whether they're classified or not. So all this debate over whether Donald Trump had the right to classify or declassify, etc. You know, holding these documents and misusing them and willfully not giving them back is what he's charged with. Also, of course, obstruction of justice, which is pretty serious in any uh, uh, legal system. So those are the things that will be read out to him later in court today when he appears uh, here behind me. Uh, he'll be fingerprinted, booked in the normal way, just as he was back in... New York a couple of months ago. Um, you say there's some, there's some of his supporters outside, not very many to be honest. There was a little flurry a moment ago, Matthew, where uh, some people were cleared out of a space. Uh, there appeared to be the bomb squad there. They arrested a guy, or it seemed to take away a guy who was delivering a flat screen TV. So we'll find out later perhaps what was behind all that, but uh, a little moment of tension there. Gary, just uh, take us through what you're expecting uh, when Donald Trump arrives at the court uh, in terms of cameras inside of the courtroom, outside of the courtroom, uh, the charges that they read out one by one. What are the mechanics uh, of what we're likely to see? So we think at about, maybe in about sort of three and a half, four hours time from now, he'll leave his Doral golf uh, course, which is in one of the Miami suburbs. It's about a 25 minute drive from there to the courthouse here in, in Miami. Uh, he'll probably, we think, go into an underground garage, sort of car park area. but then be taken into the court and at some point there he'll be booked, so the fingerprints and the, uh, the details, it's actually logging him in. He'll then be taken to the top floor of the building uh, where judge, uh, a magistrate in fact, uh, will uh, preside over the proceedings. The charges will be read out to him. He'll be asked to enter a plea and we expect him, of course, to say not guilty in this case. Uh, and then they'll decide, you know, his conditions of being released. We don't expect there to be any bail or any kind of uh, prohibition on him uh, leaving custody, etc., etc. So he'll be released in that sense. And then he'll go back straight back to the airport and fly back to New Jersey, where he's expected to make a, a statement later tonight. So in some ways, it'll be very, very similar to what happened last time in New York, that sort of procedure. Uh, in and out and then the sort of the the big speech afterwards uh, and while the police here are saying they're, they're ready for up to 50,000 protesters they have the capacity for that there's no sign of anything like that on that scale uh, at this point in time but we are still you know a few hours off. Gary, it was interesting because prosecutors mulled over whether to, to bring this court case in Washington or Miami. They went for Miami. So tell us a little more about that, the judge, the jury, how all of that is likely to, uh, to play itself out. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of sort of unknowns at this stage. I mean, we do expect after these, uh, the arraignments that uh, Donald Trump's lawyers will, for example, try and file a motion to dismiss the trial that can delay things for a little while there's some controversy over the judge in fact that I mean this case is likely to be heard in West Palm Beach in Palm Beach just up the coast of here 70 miles from here the reason they're having this hearing here today I think is because of the logistics and the concerns about whether or not you know the the police department in Palm Beach could cope with something like this but you know the, the actual 
case is based in Palm Beach because, of course, that's where Mar-a-Lago is. That's where these documents were held and kept, according to the prosecution, and withheld from the FBI, and including after a subpoena. So that's what will happen there. There's a judge who's been assigned to that who has been accused of sort of pro-Trump bias in the past. Uh, she's a Trump appointee. Uh, one of her decisions in this case previously was overturned pretty scathingly by the Court of Appeal that uh, sits above her in the federal structure. So that will be a point of, of contention. But the special prosecutor, the special counsel, Jack Smith, who's been organising this whole thing, says he expects there to be a speedy trial. And there is some evidence uh, that actually things do move reasonably quickly in Florida. So we don't have a time scale at this point in time. We may hear that. We know that his other trial in New York is, is sort of, at the moment, sort of penciled in for March, around March next year. Of course, right in the middle of the, the Republican primary. Um, and if Jack Smith has his way, this one's going to happen, you know, maybe as quickly as that. So Donald Trump's going to not only have to travel, tr tr crisscross the country uh, doing uh, primaries and, uh, and caucuses, but may have to do a few, few court appearances at the same time. Be an absolutely extraordinary position for the front leader in the Republican race for the nomination. Yes, and of course there are two other possible indictments uh, in the sidelines as well. Gary, for now, thanks once again. Let's talk to the Democratic strategist Mary Ann Marsh, who joins us on the programme. Uh, Mary Ann, thanks very much for being here. Your take on today's indictment and the seriousness of it? Well, the fact is, this is a national security matter. And in the case of the United States of America versus Donald Trump and the 37 counts charged under the Espionage Act represent the most serious crimes any American can face. And the evidence that is so incriminating in this indictment is only the tip of the iceberg. Amongst the materials Donald Trump has, or at the time had, that he lied about and hid repeatedly to the federal government and other entities, as well as his own lawyers, were military plans to attack Iran by the United States, military assets that country, countries around the world have, military vulnerability, nuclear assets that countries around the world have, military vulnerabilities that countries around the world have, as well as the United States. So Donald Trump couldn't be in more, in a tougher situation, and his fate is based on his ability to win in the court of law, which is where he is today, and the court of public opinion. In the court of law, this indictment uses his own words and the words of others with him to show that he knew exactly what he was doing. You so will have seen, is, you'll mm -hmm. have seen how he's responded and his supporters have responded. I mean, the Republican governor of New Hampshire said only recently the Democrats are like the boy who cried wolf. Oh, no, I oh, know, but this one is real. We had a Republican on the program only an hour or so ago who was saying that uh, Joe Biden had documents when he was vice president. It is the same. That was his contention. Why is it different? Well, Joe Biden and others cooperated and informed the federal government and the FBI and others they had the documents. Donald Trump, on the other hand, lied about it to everybody and then continued to play hide and seek every time the FBI lawyers and others went searching for those documents. So it's clear he's hiding them. Why, we have to ask ourselves what he was doing with them. They're not his documents to hold. It's not like a souvenir from a summer vacation. They belong to the federal government and should have been returned before he walked out of the White House. And the other is, who did he show them to? And did he perhaps even sell them? So what is he doing with these documents? And I will just underscore the fact, this indictment, as incriminating as it is, is literally just the tip of the iceberg. The prosecutor did not show all the evidence, did not show all the documents, and did not show everything they're gonna argue in court. And that should be very chilling and worrisome for Donald Trump. And yet, for his base, it seems to have absolutely no impact at all, possibly even enhance his uh, possible uh, getting that uh, Republican nomination. I mean, from the outside, in terms of the rule of law, politics in the US, it looks pretty broken. Well, it, it's not, though. We've been here before, 1973, with Richard Nixon and Watergate and his vice president, Spiro Agnew, under 41 uh, federal count indictments. 
Um, so we've been here. The reality is it's only a portion of the Republicans, sadly 76% of Republicans in a CBS poll that was released in the last 72 hours think this is all politics. However, 80% of Democrats, independents, and some Republicans, 80% of Americans believe that this is a serious matter and he should have been charged. So while Donald Trump will be the nominee for the Republicans, no question, he will lose the general election because the majority of the people believe he should have been charged and is acting recklessly. Last point here, you don't walk into a, any court, let alone a federal court, with this indictment on politics. It comes with facts evidence and laws that you have to meet and prove your case. That is what happened here. And it's sad propaganda by Republicans and others, Trump supporters, to try to brainwash so many people when facts seem to be fungible in a court of law. And in this case, the facts are damning. Just a final quick thought, because uh, you'll have seen some of the rhetoric that's been on social media from some of his supporters, even referencing uh, the amount of people with guns in the United States. If uh, the authorities want to come for Donald Trump, that's what uh, Carrie Lake uh, had referenced in one of her uh, tweets. So what do you make of that? How concerned are you by language like that? It's a dangerous game and people, unfortunately, just like January 6th, were harmed and many of them paid the price. Thousands of them, in a matter of fact, have been charged and sent to jail. Donald Trump has not yet. And Donald Trump has to win in the court of law and the court of public opinion to survive. And he knows that. And so what I would say to everyone is this is a great country. It is a country of laws. Nobody is above the law. And that is proven today by the fact that Donald Trump is in court. Marianne Marsh, uh, we have to leave it there. But uh, thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News.